You would be forgiven for not knowing the term PSYOP if you're not a right-wing conspiracist or from a military background. It is short for psychological operations. It essentially means an effort to influence the state of mind or motives of a target to a certain point of view. You could also say that the Republicans' ultimate PSYOP is immigration. They use it to scare not just white working-class MAGA voters, but Americans in general about the threat of a migrant invasion. When in reality, they have no intention of ever fixing the yes, rather overwhelmed, underperforming immigration system in this country. Case in point. Red state governors are busing and flying migrants to blue cities like New York to get people in those non-border cities to freak out about an influx of impoverished non-English speakers in their midst. They're racing to impeach Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas over border policy with neither evidence of wrongdoing or even his testimony. And Republicans are on their way to completely normalizing Donald Trump's literal Hitler rhetoric that migrants are poisoning the blood of the country. It's designed to get more than just MAGA Republicans to believe that not only is immigration a huge danger, but that it's a problem that only Trump can fix. And yet, when presented with a potential bipartisan deal for new asylum and border laws, Republicans don't actually want to do anything. After top congressional leaders met with President Biden at the White House Wednesday, Senator Lindsey Graham told MAGA Republicans in the House that they would not do any better. To those who think that if President Trump wins, which I hope he does, that we can get a better deal, you won't. You got to get 60 votes in the United States Senate. So to my Republican friends, to get this kind of border security without granting a pathway to citizenship is really unheard of. But any potential progress is likely doomed since Trump says no. Last night on his fake Twitter, he demanded that Republicans reject a border deal unless they get everything. Well, everything like what? We already knew that the fix was in hours earlier when during an appearance on Fox, Laura Ingram enforced how, informed House Speaker Mike Johnson that Trump had just told her that he was adamantly opposed to a deal with Democrats. President Trump is not wrong. He and I have been talking about this um, uh, pretty frequently. I talked to him uh, night before last about the same subject. Joining me now is Ruth ben Giat, professor of history and a scholar of authoritarianism at New York University, and Michael Steele, former RNC chair and co-host of the new MSNBC morning show, The Weekend. And Chairman Steele, I will start with you because you used to run this party. I mean, I think it is clear that on this they want the issue, not the solution, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, there, there's no no doubt about that. And, and it's really interesting. The history behind the point you just made really goes back to the end of the Reagan term and and certainly at the end of the Bush term, where President George Bush 43 actually developed a deal, got a deal, had had a consensus built in the House and the Senate um, in, back in 2006. And it was ironically in this instance. Uh, the Senate conservatives killed the bill. The bill died in the Senate. And that began this long trudge to nowhere on immigration because it was worth more for, as political fodder than policy solution. And, and so now in this environment where you've got uh, someone like Donald Trump who who does not care about the issue other than build a wall, let's keep Mexicans out, et cetera, um, this is the political narrative that fuels money and it fuels uh, passionate votes. It draws out people who live in parts of the country who on any given day of the week don't have to think about a border, but are furious about it and, and really concerned because, you know, they could be coming to my neighborhood. They could be taking my jobs, et cetera. So that's the real thrust of this. And Lindsey Graham's right. Um, there is no bill in the Senate um, in, in a Trump term uh, because they're going to need those 60 votes and Democrats are not going to give them to them if it if it requires everything. Right. And I mean, I will I am old enough to remember Marco Rubio, who was part of the gang of eight that was negotiating those deals, helping to kill the deal that his own staff was writing because Rush Limbaugh told him to. Rush Limbaugh yelled right. at him, and then suddenly he was against the deal uh, that he and John McCain were, their staffs were writing. But the other piece of it, Ruth Ben-Ghiat, that I think is the nefarious part of it, 
you know, there's the, we want the issue because it gal galvanizes our voters, but there's also the part of it that galvanizes autocracy and autocratic thinking. I want to play a couple of sound bites. This first one is the governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, lamenting that his forces cannot shoot people. And the only thing that we're, we're not doing is we're not uh, uh, shooting people who come across the border uh, because, of course, the Biden administration would charge us with murder. And he, his uh, immigration police, his immigration forces in the state of Texas, refused to intervene when a mother and two children, aged 10 and 8, were caught in his web of, you know, uh, uh, his, his sort of makeshift barbed wire fence, and they drowned. So there's actual literal dying going on in the state of Texas, and this is what he believes Bay, uh, t t Greg Abbott, and I assume Trump believes that the base wants. Yeah, and I'm glad you started the segment talking about psyops because propaganda is not just when trying to get somebody to believe one false fact, like vaccines cause autism. Propaganda is actually changing the way people think and feel through the associations they make. So famously, like, you know, in Nazi Germany, if you heard the word Jew, you were trained to think filthy and dangerous. So Trump and the Republicans are doing the same thing to immigrants. And of course, there's a long history of, of you know, racializing and, and hating immigrants in our country. But the, the blood polluter thing, to, to, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, link them to not only crime, taking away people's jobs, um, but also polluting the blood, this goes right back to fascism. I, I truly feel like I've spent way too many hours uh, looking at fascist rhetoric and Mussolini in 1927 actually talked about, these are his words, black, brown, and yellow people trying to come over the border and ruin, quote, white civilization. So this is a very old, it's actually the biggest through line in authoritarianism, right-wing authoritarianism, is people coming over the border to ruin your country and ruin white Christian civilization. Yeah, and, and Viktor Orban uses that exact same framing. Uh, Meloni yeah. in Italy has used that same framing. And Hitler literally used the polluting the blood let line. It's literally straight out of Hitler. Well, now let, let me allow you viewers to listen to the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson of the great state of Louisiana, literally justify that rhetoric. That's not language I would use, but, but I understand the urgency of President Trump's admonition. He's been saying this since he ran for president the first time, that we have to secure the border. And I think the vast majority of the American people understand the necessity of that, and I right. think they agree with his position.